What is good, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? It's your boy Foxy. Welcome back to the Fox's Den. Getting into another reaction. You know what time it is? It's time for One Piece, episode 1094. <sighs> Last episode was a fucking treat. That shit was amazing. Got some amazing quality level of animation, just like some of the fights that we saw in Wano. Some of those big fights Queen versus Sanji, Zoro versus King, Kaido and Luffy, obviously, Big Mom, Law. Like all of those amazing moments that we saw where the animation was just top fucking tier. We're getting exactly that treatment as well with Law versus Blackbeard. And it's off to an amazing fucking start. There was some. Uh, crazy impact frames within that episode uh two uh main instances that i put in my reaction i slowed it down just to get a good look at them and if you guys haven't you know if you guys watch that episode and you haven't seen you know impact frames that slow or you don't slow it down yourself you know that gives you a chance to see all those little t tiny frames within like one second how they look and everything and how much work they put into it you know the animators i mean it's fucking beautiful it's astounding uh and the whole fight uh, that started so far I, it, it, he, he was just using his quick quick fruit Blackbeard and, and Law and his crew showing that they can fucking actually step up and the rest of his crew a lot of people going into this I'm sure were like yo what the fuck is Law's crew really capable of like we haven't really seen them do shit like, it, it feels like it's just Law on that crew but as we saw you know his crew is definitely capable and they, they were able to do amazing things they're really good in the water uh, that's for sure like you know some of them are attacking Blackbeard's ship at the same time that the main forces of Law's crew are actually fighting Blackbeard and the, the, the his main members, uh, which at this point is the sniper, Burgess, uh, the drunk dude, and the horse. And I think that's it at the moment. And so, you know, he doesn't even have all of his crew members here at the moment. And, and if they are here, they just haven't showed themselves yet, or maybe they're on the ship, or maybe they're elsewhere, because his crew is so fucking overpowered, they can kind of just do what they want like by themselves you know what i'm saying like them they're, they're that strong they, they were already broken to begin with but blackbeard's actual devil fruit the dark dark fruit or whatever uh, that might not be the actual name but you know what i'm talking about that shit is ridiculous like he can just fucking have as many fruits as he wants he can give people fruits like oh you're you were already nasty but here's this so now you're even more insane you know what i'm saying like it's just ridiculous how stacked his crew is and how overpowered himself is and I was talking a lot uh, in the past couple episodes or the past couple weeks, I guess you could say, about not seeing him use hockey too much before. And that's just because I guess he just doesn't feel like he needs to most of the time because he's that fucking overpowered. But if someone's coming at him with that fucking hockey, guess what? He's got it too. So he, I mean, he can hold his own uh, against hockey users just as much as anybody else with Conqueror's hockey. You know, it just goes to show that I guess he just doesn't have to use it most of the time because... Why would you whenever you're going against people that don't have hockey themselves or you have just these insane devil fruits? You don't really need to. So the entirety of that episode and seeing that fight really start, I mean, what a fucking treat. That shit was so gas. This episode, I could expect maybe we continue where we left off or maybe we finally jump back over to Egghead because it's been a little bit since we've seen at least um, Luffy's luffy and uh crew um not zoro and them maybe we see them reunite finally but mainly luffy bonnie jimbei and chopper because they were dealing with a pacifista uh that is on uh, that it acts as the police force on egghead and that's when we first learn about bonnie you know or, or, and the first bit of this information that kuma is her father and so this is when she starts to break down she's you know obviously traumatized by this whole thing so seeing him is a trigger or even though it's not really him but seeing one of his clones one of his cyborgs one of the pacifista that's a trigger to her and she kind of just froze and like started you know breaking down and obviously jimbei joppers luffy's reaction like what the fuck he's your father but then at the same time they're trying to like save her and get her out of the way because the pacifista ain't gonna fucking stop that's not your dad so that's where we left off we might jump back over there because one piece or oda likes to do that he likes to jump you know from place to place you know like we're not just going to finish one fucking fight in a in a few episodes we're going to jump around a lot and i like that style of i think it works really well in one piece in the way he does it because especially right now and what we're getting into in this arc and egghead like when i when i've been reading like ever since wano ended and i've been reading the manga 
I'm telling I keep on telling you all this. Oda is cooking and the fact that he jumps around like this, like there's so much happening in the world, not only with Luffy and his crew on Egghead, but also with the revolutionaries and Sabo. And then also right now with Blackbeard and Law. And I mean, that's the tip of the iceberg. That's already three things happening at once. And we're jumping in between all of those things. It's almost overwhelming, but that's what makes it so fucking exciting. And you're just locked into the story. I, it's absolutely insane. So that's pretty much where we're at. I'm excited to get into this episode, get in this reaction. Let's do it. If you guys enjoy it, please leave a like down below, comment, subscribe if you're new, hit the notification bell so you know the next one's dropping. Let's get into it. One Piece 1094. Egghead Labo Face. Okay, so it looks like we're jumping back over to the Egghead, like I thought. Okay, so Pacifista Kuma is going fucking ballistic right now. God damn. They're running for their goddamn lives, okay? At least Bonnie's able to move now. Go ahead, Jinbei! Yeah, and regardless, Bonnie, like, come on. You're already running with us. Like, that's not your actual dad. I know. I know. It's traumatizing, but come on. Keep it moving. Keep it pushing. Come on. Baka! <laughs> he said, no. I ain't letting go. You're being stupid right now. It's not your father. I know it looks like him. It's not your father, though. Ah, uh, see? Yeah, she can't help but see him how she's used to seeing him. Pulling on her heartstrings, bro. Alright, Jinbei! Mm-hmm. This is just one. Who's to say there's not multiple? Because it says police, so there could be a whole force of them. Wait, what? Is it because they look completely different because the age just changed? <laughs> look at Luffy. He's even got the old grandpa stance. He got his arms behind his back like he's standing like a grandpa, dude. GG! GG, what happened? Oh, man. That is so funny how they got out of that. <laughs> Yo, your old ass back. What the fuck? You just went through the wall? <laughs> no way he's talking, bro. No, no. <laughs> the little squiggly lines around his body showing how fucking like sore and old he is. <laughs> they both can barely breathe, they're on their last legs, old as fuck. Is that a light? Did she just pull out a fucking lightsaber? In junk? <laughs> Bonnie, chill, chill, chill. It's just the info that we have to our knowledge. We're not saying it's true. <laughs> I can't get over this. 
That's what I'm saying! She just pulled out a fucking lightsaber in a junkyard. Like it's junk. God bless. Not old anymore. Yeah, I was about to say, like, are you gonna turn Jimmy back or not? <laughs> Yo. Back to Zoro and crew? Yeah. It's about time. We haven't seen them in a couple episodes. This shit can fly? <laughs> Soap and Frankie are loving this. See, they're seeing the land of Egghead for the first time themselves, too. Luffy, Chopper, and Jinbei and them got a little bit ahead of start. Yo, Lilith is all, you know what I'm saying? Happy to show him around now, where at first she was like, yo, give me your shit. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, they're already aware of like, yeah, she's aware of uh, Luffy's, Luffy and them's little adventures right now. They got took, they got taken straight to the, the actual spot, like the lab. <laughs> Sanji's like, yeah, I'll trust her. I don't give a fuck. Damn, what a callback, dude. Sky Island. It's been a minute. Yeah, Frankie wasn't there with us for that adventure. Yep, first time for me. Bro, the colors and everything, dude. This shit looks so good, bro. He just wants to see them in, in her clothes. He doesn't give a fuck about his own clothes. Yeah, uh-huh. Get the fuck out of here, Sanji! <laughs> Fire fit? Damn, Ruby, yo, chill! What the fuck? I was already in love with you, like, damn, relax, bruh. Yo, soap, I fuck with the color schemes. So I'm saying the colors, I, we haven't got to see the colors because it's all black and white in the manga. Great and strong. Hell yeah. She'll break your fucking neck. <laughs> I'm a bur <laughs> bro, Sanji. Nice self awareness, dude. Day what? This motherfucker, dude. <laughs> Jana, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, but kick rocks. Yo, so funny. Yo, Frankie, his fit fits him perfectly since he's a cyborg himself. Like, dude, he looks insane. The source of power is fire? Yeah, Luffy just did that not too long ago, too. Ow! <laughs> there we go. Somebody with logic. 
<laughs> Bye. <laughs> holding his breath. <laughs> oh, once you go through, it's hard on the other side. Okay, meeting Edison as well. Not officially meeting, but we're hearing, hearing her voice. Or his, whatever. Yo, Egghead is so dope, bro. Like, we are still so early. Like, it just looks great. Future treasure. <laughs> Future kick. Oh, shit. This is where they're kept. And remember, we were hearing fucking uh, Hello Meppo san pleading to like go save Kobe. Hey, it's not far. We can get this. Let's use a seraphim. Yeah, so this is, this is where the rest of them are. あ、天才ってのはな。自分の未来も見えてしまうものだ。あ、本能の指導、エヴァパンク。私は。もうすぐ死ぬだろう。もう大戦。お前に聞いといてほしかったさ。Oh, he's Oh no! Come on, bro, yo. The way you ended that episode, that's wild, dude. Oh my god, I was like, who's he talking to? He's talking to fucking dragon. And that's uh Vega one punk one, Shaka, whatever. Oh dude. Bro, that episode was so fucking gas. As usual. Alrighty guys, what another absolutely amazing episode of One Piece. That was a lot of fun to watch. As I thought, we jump around every once in a while. Or every couple episodes, every other episode, something like that. You know what I'm saying? We might get a couple episodes where we're just on a straight and narrow and just one after the other. Leave off or start where we left off of uh, on previous episodes. But this one, last episode, we got the beginning of the fight between Blackbeard and Law. And then this one, we got caught back up with what's going on in Egghead with Luffy and crew. Uh, that's pretty much what I expected, either uh, continuing Blackbeard's fight or jumping back over to Egghead, which is what we did. Seeing Luffy and uh, Bonnie and Chopper and Jinbei continue to run from the pacifista and then eventually being able to figure out how to get away from it or i mean it was kind of a on the cusp like random decision uh because at first they were like okay we're gonna have to deal with them like we can't run anymore we got into a dead end like yo bonnie close your eyes we're gonna take care of this shit real quick you know what i'm saying because bonnie is like still like don't do anything like you know what i'm saying it's like bro it's not your dad we, we we've already made that clear but like you know again like she, it's, it's hard for her to like just see anything happening to a clone because i mean it looks smack like him so she can't help but see like actual dad you know what i'm saying so that's what's like you know pulling her so hard and making it seem difficult or making it more difficult than it has to be because they're used to just like fucking pass fista up if they have to because they've dealt with them before you know what i'm saying as chopper like apologize like yeah sorry we've had a you know a couple run-ins with pacifista so like i apologize but that's when Bonnie uses her her fruit, her age age fruit, where she made Chopper and Luffy old as fuck, and then Jinbei young again, like almost like a kid, and herself also down to a kid size, or uh, I think her original age. I don't know if that's been fucking talked about yet. I don't fucking know. But anyways, changed everybody's age to where the pacifista basically just didn't recognize them and then just left. It's like, oh okay, bet like. That's a hilarious way to get out of that, but cool. And then that's when they uh, continue talking a little bit as they're still in that like changed age state and uh, just getting more of Bonnie's frustration about her father. Like, you know, what is 
what Jimbe and most other people have heard about Kuma through, you know, regular news outlets or whatever, you know, that he is a tyrant from this country that, you know, was uh, kicked out for being a tyrant or something like that. And then, you know, eventually joining the Revolutionary Army, being sentenced to life uh, to uh, clone his body and, you know, the cyborg kind of stuff. And um, then just Bonnie's point of view and frustration of like, that's not fucking fair. Like, it's not fair. It's basically killing him. It's, bas- it's basically the same fucking thing. So, you know, she's just voicing her frustration and then Luffy and them like agreeing with her. Like, yeah, that's fucked up. And then eventually her turning them back. And that's pretty much, I think, the last thing that we saw from them, from that group. And then we catch back up finally with Zoro and the rest of the crew that were still on the ship and dealing with Lilith. Lilith brings them to the island officially and welcomes them. Uh, they get their new fits. I mean, they look fucking amazing. Nami and Roby's life outfits. Holy shit, Roby, what the fuck is good, bro? Yo, that shit, that fit goes crazy. Uh, as does everybody else's. I think it fits Frankie really well because he's already a cyborg himself. So that future, futuristic type of vibe, like his fit looks fucking dope. As does the rest of them. Like I like the the green uh, on Usopp and um, yeah, they get their new clothes. Uh, Zoro and Brooke decide to stay back to watch the ship because they're on a government affiliated island. You never know what the fuck's gonna happen. And Zoro's not completely trusting Lilith just yet. You know, as usual, he's usually the one that is the most, I guess, level headed. Or even though he's terrible with directions, he's usually the one that's like pretty strict. Uh, so he doesn't, you know, trust everything just yet. And this is a government island, so he's like, yeah, I'm gonna watch the ship. Well, everybody else is just excited to be here. Like, yo, look at this island. It's so futuristic. Oh my God, these clothes, this and that, blah, blah, blah. You know, everybody's enjoying their, enjoy, enjoying themselves. They go up to the main lab and they're being, you know, uh, they're following Lilith. And then Lilith gets a call from Edison, goes somewhere else. And then Edison continues to direct them to wherever, you know, Edison was directing them to and within the lab, since obviously they don't know where they're going. While also Zoro and Brooke, they had a little conversation with Caribou where Caribou was like, well, yeah, we're out of Wano, but like, I didn't think this was going to be the first island that we come to. Like, this is government affiliated. Like, I'm going to have to stay with you a little longer. And Zoro is just like, nope, like, thanks for helping our captain get the fuck out. <laughs> Yo, this is so funny. But yeah, they continue to walk down the lab and uh, they eventually get to this room where Edison's like, I'll open it for you. And it's, you know, all these doors with numbers on them and this door opens and they see something that looks like Jimbe. And as we can tell, we've already seen something like this before. We're on Empress Island with Boa and them where there was a child version of Boa with wings, flames on their back, child version of Mihawk, wings, flames on their back. Now we're seeing Jimbe. So if you didn't already gather that from the first two that we saw, Seraphim were basically pacifists that replicated off of the Shichibukai seven warlords of the sea the previous uh roster and lunarians it seems because that black wings flames you know what i'm saying the dark st- skin tone the white hair that's all like traits of a lunarian which we saw full form full-fledged f- f- lunarian like an actual lunarian with king king was lunarian and that's who zoro took down so it just goes to show how crazy these pacifists are if that's the characteristics they have like absolutely insane um also depending on how actually uh alike they are to their respective shichibukai because i mean mihawk for example that's the greatest swordsman alive the fuck combined with lunarian dude don't even step up like you're gonna get rocked so they're seeing that for the first time i don't know why edison is choosing to show this to them uh maybe just to see how they react and it seems like it seems like he was about to attack and i guess they just want to see what they're capable of maybe or Edison wants to see what the crew is capable of, or this you know group of people, Sanji, Frankie, and them. But that's pretty much where we leave off with that group. And then we see Shaka, uh, Punk One, walking down the hallway and kind of, it seems like he's talking to himself at first. But then we see on the other end, he's talking to Dragon, talking about how he's going to die soon, apparently. And so this might be the actual Vegapunk actually talking to Dragon, because I guess, I guess it seems that they know each other. Because Dragon's like, don't say that shit. Or like, there's no way that you're going to fucking die. Like, what are you talking about? So maybe Punk 1 is the actual Vegapunk. They apparently have a history together. Him him and Dragon. Like, Vegapunk and Dragon. And so seeing that conversation and them teasing us with that. Like, just the start of it or whatever. At the end of the episode. And then you see that to be continued. It's like, god damn it, bro. I want more. Uh, So fucking good. 
And uh, that's interesting information that he's talking about that he's probably going to die soon. Like, from what? Is it a disease? Like, is he just... What, what's going on there? And so, you know... Uh, and, and how they even know each other from the begin with as well. Like, dude, they're still so... Like, bro, they're so, Like, we're still so early. And I'm loving it. Like, oh my god. Just, to, just the... The, the visuals too just the colors of everything how egghead looks like the colors the animation and then obviously yeah the colors combined like seeing everybody's new outfits and what color they're in i mean dude it looks fucking great dude it looks so good and then on top of that all this background information that they're teasing at that we haven't really gotten full info on uh obviously body's father now this dragon vegapunk situation we're still not even done with the Blackbeard Law fight. I'm sure we're going to get back to that at some point. I mean, fuck, bro. It's just, this is what I'm talking about, how it almost feels overwhelming because of how much is happening at once. But that's what makes it so fucking good. There's so much going on. Um, So, yeah, that's pretty much where we're at for One Piece 1094. Another amazing episode in the books. Hope you guys enjoyed the reaction. If y'all did, please leave a like down below. Comment, subscribe if you're new. Hit the notification bell so you know the next one's dropping. I'll see you on the next one. Y'all be good. Deuces.